My friends here, great to see you here, uh, all know me as Aggie. And some of my friends even call me Dr. Who, even though I just started my PhD program. <laughs> uh, but my Chinese official name is Luan Jiao, which basically means a beautiful female phoenix. Uh, my grandfather gave me that name in the expectation that no matter what hardship I go through in life, I will always be able to rise from ashes, revive, reborn like a phoenix. So I think I did meet his expectations some point in my life. Uh, the biggest hardship took place when I was two. I was in this car accident, uh, life-changing, and I was taken to the hospital. The doctors removed the crushed foot part, and they also decided to do a baloney left amputation. My parents, you know, they didn't know what to do, and they signed on the surgery paper, agreed on the operation with that. Um, my grandfather, however, he does not believe that, and he practiced traditional Chinese medicine. So, out of expectation, he just took me out of the hospital. And later, I went through his treatment. He used traditional Chinese herbs. And I don't know how long, but I was told that I was able to walk again without any assistance from crutches, uh, prosthetic leg, or any physical therapy. And for the following 13 years, I walked like that. Uh, but because uneven use of strength, my left foot can never develop like my right leg, the whole leg. And there is also a widened uh, length difference between the two legs. Um, and until I graduated from eighth grade, I got my first prosthetic leg. But I was extremely lucky because I have amazingly supportive parents. They sent me to mainstream schools in China. So in China, that's by law, mainstream schools should admit children with disabilities. However, on the condition that the children with disability has to adapt to the life and the studies in the school, little or no accommodations are provided. No special teaching strategies, no special resources are provided. So actually, the, earlier this year in April, uh, a major Chinese media was promoting this news story. In this news, there's this kid with a disabling condition. He couldn't walk, and all his three years in high school, he was actually helped by one of his classmates, a single one classmate, carrying him around for three years. And they were promoting this story, saying how helpful that classmate was. That got me really upset because not everybody has a classmate like him. And if he doesn't have, you know, accommodations from the school or from help from, you know, his classmate, he may drop out. So I was extremely lucky because I can move independently. I walk unevenly. Um, but I, you know, I went through all the years. I took the exams required and I was admitted into a Chinese university. So, on my first day of university, I, I went through registration, physical checkup, and I went back to the dorm. I met my roommates for the first time, and we started talking and bonding. And then this girl, actually, uh, I met her in the physical checkup room, and she just brought up this. Guys, oh no, girls, do you know that there's a girl in our freshman group who wears a fake leg? And I was there, I was like, Hi, that was me. And then she replied, I'm sorry, I have a hard time recognizing faces. So I was like, okay, you cannot recognize my face, but you recognize my leg. And this incident got me thinking, why my presence in the university was so visible? Why was it worthy attention? So I, later I did some research on how many people with disabilities actually go to universities, go to in colleges in China. And the data really shocked me. So uh, in any single year, due to the expansion of higher education in China, Chinese universities and colleges, they admit a huge number of people. And say, in 2012, the number who gained admission into higher education institutions in China was 6.8 million. In the previous year, that figure was 6.7 million. 
and the previous year, 6.5 million. You get the idea. And then for people with disabilities, this figure fluctuates, but not increasing any significant amount, even due to the expansion. Every year, it was around 8,000. In 2012, that figure was 8,363. In 2011, that was 8,027. And I did some simple math. What's the ratio between people with disabilities and their peers without disabilities in higher education institutions in China? And I got this figure, 1 to 819. So based on the consensus in China in 2006, China has a population of, with disabilities of 83 million, accounting 6% of the whole population. Put another way, that means one in 16 people has a disability in this country. However, one in 819 shows up on the first day of university. And I felt, okay, this figure well explains my visibility in the university. People don't expect us to, you know, to, to show up in this kind of public settings. And I do understand that not every person with disability wants to go into higher education institutions. However, I also know that based on a lot of research, there is a highly positive correlation between higher education degree, better employment, higher income. And this is not just an issue with developing countries like China. Here in the US as well, people with disabilities have a lower graduation rate, lower employment rate. And even in the same position, they are paid less. It's a universal issue. We are invisible, and this, like, this invisibility also reminds me of a lot of experience growing up and went through mainstream schools in China. I remember this, um, I have a good voice, as you can tell, I still do. Uh, I was selected uh, by, uh, in the school choir group when I was in primary school. And we rehearsed a lot because we have this final competition to compete with other schools. And we rehearsed really like a lot. And then prior to the final competition, my teacher came to talk to me. She said, Ranjiao, uh, maybe this time you don't want to go. And her reasons was that because my uneven walking would adversely affect the group performance. So, and she wants me to take one for the team. She made it really noble, you know, sacrifice yourself for the group, group performance. And I know this invisibility applies in other, like, my romantic relationship with guys, uh, gender plays a role. I remember dating this uh, Chinese guy for six years. Great guy, never regret dating him. Doesn't smoke, doesn't drink. Uh, however, he has such a great, no, hard time disclosing my disability to his families. And he gave me two reasons. The first reason, because he did not want to risk giving his grandfather a heart attack by telling him that the girl that his grandson is dating has a physical disability. And the second reason he offered was that my disability is comparable to the sex photos that are accidentally leaked out online. So it's like you never want to show people or tell people that, okay, you have the sex photos and you never want to tell people that you have a physical disability. And this invisibility goes back to higher education. I love higher education, that's why I'm in the PhD program. Anyway, and I want to talk about this because in China, along with college entrance examination, in order to go into higher education institutions, you also have to go through a mandatory physical examination. So your physical condition will be in this report. And this report will, under, will be under review of the admission staff 
of those universities, colleges. And there is a regulation, a le legit advisory guideline for the admission staff to based on. And they can based on their denial or ex, you know, admission decision on those conditions. There are certain conditions if you have, you are not allowed to get admission into certain programs. For example, if, a, if you have a speech impediment, there's a, okay, this range of programs you can get into. Aviation, transportation, telecommunication, foreign languages, international trade, music, film, law, etc. So, you know, people with disabilities already have a low enrollment rate, a high dropout rate. And even if they hit the third grade in senior high school, they still have this regulation barrier to go into higher education institutions, which well explains the invisibility again. And that is why I'm here today. When my friend reached out to me saying, do you want to do this talk? I said, yes. Because I want to be the voice. I want to be a voice. I want to be an advocate for people with disabilities, not just in China, but, you know, everywhere. Because I want to promote this environment where it is inclusive. People with disabilities not, are not only encouraged to participate, they are also provided the fair chance to participate. The regulation barriers can be eliminated. They can be provided with the access, the chance to participate. I said, it, I said that already. And I want to promote this inclusive environment where people with disabilities can be respected for their individuality, for their humanness, instead of being just stigmatized or discriminated based on the physical difference or whatever difference they might have. I want to promote this inclusive environment where, you know, no matter where you are able-bodied, disabled, it is not seen as a big deal to do stuff, to live with a disability. Because I believe disability does not make us inferior or defective. It only makes us more human. Thank you so much for listening.